Hello. Hope everybody's doing okay. We'll get right on started. Today we're going to discuss fenestrations, which are windows and doors. So let's let's get started on that. Everybody hear me okay? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, so windows. So fenestration is a name for a, an opening in a house. And when we talk about windows, um, there are many different types of windows. <coughs> and, uh, you know, so we have tons of different types of windows uh, where we have a double hung and a uh, single hung. So let's start with those. Those are seem to be the most popular uh, windows to be used. And so we have a single hung and a double hung. And the single hung means that only this bottom piece goes up and down. Now, it has nothing to do with this tilt on here. So don't, don't let that can be confused. You can get both types of uh, of both the single hung and the double hung without this tent tilt option. And so uh, the double hung means that this one will go up and down and this one will go up and down. So let me, uh, I'm gonna mute myself for just a second. And uh, well, I guess I should tell you what I'm getting ready to do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull up uh, on my phone here and uh, maybe. And so I want to, uh, let's see, where can I get to it? I want to show you the windows in my office here, which are double hung windows. And uh, so I want to, uh, so I'm going to uh, mute myself on the computer for just a second. There, now, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Good. Okay, so let me turn this around here and let's talk about these windows. So um, these are double hung windows. So these are vinyl double hung windows, meaning that the top goes up and down and the bottom or excuse me, the bottom goes up and down, the top goes up and down. I'll get these right in a minute. But these also have the tilt option. So basically what I have to do is I have to pull this up just a little bit, okay? And then I have these little buttons on the side and it's gonna take two hands for just a second. So I pull those little things out and then those tilt in where I can easily, um, I can get to this and I can clean it, whatever I need to do. And then of course, close it back up, push it back down and, uh, and then lock it. Make sure that both of them are turned. So there is in the locking mechanism. And they, like I say, it's just these little, little things here that allows me to do that. Now I can do that with both. Here again, I'm gonna have to use both hands, sorry. I can do the both top and bottom on this tilt. All right, because it's a double hung window, then you know, I can tilt both of these very easily. And these can also be pulled out. So if you break a glass, then really what I have to do is I just, I have to pull up on one side of this to make it go sideways. And then I can take the whole thing out and then I can put a new one in. I'm not gonna do that because it will be, it takes a little bit of skill to do that and trying to hold this phone and do that is not gonna work. So uh, what I wanted to, else I wanted to talk to you about are these little things here. So if, uh, you see how that works there. If a window is, 
closer to the ground than two feet. And in this case, I have a deck outside, so I don't have to worry about it. But if I come over here to this window, it's greater than six feet on this side. So what that means is the code says that if the inside is less than two feet and the outside is greater than six feet, then I have to have these little child safety devices here that pop out. And that just keeps the window from being opened all the way and a child cannot climb through this window. And that's, that's part of the code. So most all windows come standard with this. Now, at least the vinyl windows do. And uh, so also, let me tell you about this window. This window is a double pane window. It's an insulated window. You can see in here uh, that, you know, there's a piece of glass here and there's a piece of glass on the other side. And one way that you can look at that, one way that you can determine that really well is, let's come in here and stole my lighter. Well, let's, let's see if I can do it another way. Well, I can't do it. I can't turn my flashlight on while I am recording. Let me see if I've got another light around here. I don't see one. If I didn't want one, I'd, they'd be all over the place. Let me run in the bathroom right quick, see if I've got one. Kids like to light their candles and stuff and they steal all my lighters. I know where one is and I'll get right quick. And we'll get back to normal. Sorry about the delay. Get tackled by all the dogs because they think I'm going somewhere. Okay, so. See how many reflections there are there? There's two reflections. That means that there's two pieces of glass in there. Now, if there were three pieces of glass, then I would have, uh, I would have two reflections there. I mean, I would have three reflections there and indicating that I do have three pieces of glass there. Now, let me sign off of this. And turn back on here. All right. Um, so that gives you an idea of the single hung and the double hung window. So the single hung, the top does not, it's a fixed window, does not move. The double hung window, both of these move. And then, you know, like I say, the tilt, this tilt method, it is an option uh, for some windows. It does not come standard. A casement window opens like a door and, uh, it either has a, uh, in this case, it has a little, uh, crank on it. And sometimes that's got a crank as well. Sometimes that's got a crank. Okay, so that sometimes it does not have a crank. Sometimes it just has a handle and you just turn the handle, open it up just like you would a door. Um, you know, either window is really a, a, you know, a good type of window. These are probably the most uh, energy efficient type windows uh, because in the crank method, especially, you can crank this thing closed and then lock it down and uh, it's, it's impossible to get it open and they have good uh, weather stripping around there. These windows that I have, the weather stripping's okay, but where the two windows come together, then that weather stripping in there is not the best weather stripping in the world. So the casement windows are probably the number one type of uh, window for energy efficientness. And there's that. The picture window obviously does not, or the fixed window does not open at all. 
so it's it can be used. Uh, so this top portion here, it would be a fixed window. And uh, I'm working on a couple of houses now that have different types of fixed windows in it. So when you're looking at uh, the back of this, then this window here is a fixed trapezoid type window. Um, and let's see, that's all. Uh, another house that I'm working on right now has, um, has transom windows. There we go. A transom window is basically just a elongated high window. Transom means that it can be uh, used in connection with another window. So you can have windows that have transom windows on it. Uh, in this case, these type of windows do not open. These are fixed windows. Uh, most transom windows uh, that, that go over top of another window uh, are also fixed and do not open. Let me see if I've got a... I think I've got another uh, example of that from last year, but I don't remember which one it was. <laughs> Not that one. There's a different type of fixed window that is gonna be used. This is a, a house that's located on the lake and this faces the lake. So they want you know a lot of light. They want a, a big window where they can see. All of these windows here are uh, double hung top windows. Let me look one more time, see if I can find that. Gurecki, I don't think that's either. Maybe it was the year before, maybe it was Rupp. No, that's not it either. Somewhere I've got a house that I did a lot of, uh, they wanted casement windows. I mean, they wanted uh, uh, transom windows on every window, above every window. And I really don't remember which one it was. I, I lose track. I do so many a year that I kind of lose track. But no, so I'm not going to waste any more of your time looking for this thing. Um, so anyway, that gives you an idea of different types of windows there. So we have, again, those trapezoid windows. This is in uh, a, uh, a log home type setting. Um, and I just realized that I say, oh, that's, that is fiber cement up here, but it's not over here. This is log over here. So that gives you an idea of that. This uh, would be an awning window. So an awning window is not shown. Yes, it is. It's shown down here, but it's closed. Let me show you one open. Um, an awning window. There you go. An awning window opens out uh, like so. All right. So if it rains, then it's going to hit this and it's going to uh, splash off of that and it's not going to rain inside. Now, not to be confused with a hopper window, uh, hopper windows open in and you see these a lot of times in basements where the ground may be, you know, fairly, fairly high on the wall and you can put these windows in and you can open them up and you don't have to worry about uh, water splashing in the window. Uh, whereas you might have a, a, a a sliding window or something there. And, and when it rains, you get a lot of splash into it. These, if it splashes on the wind, of course it runs back out. And I didn't say it would be a clean window, uh, but there you go is a hopper window versus the, uh, uh, yeah, somebody's asking if we're meeting today. Yep. On Zoom. So uh, that gives you an idea that a hopper window opens in and the awning window opens out. Um, this custom shape window is nothing more than uh, a casement window. These two are casements down here. And then you have a custom shaped fixed window on the top. Uh, sliding windows, um, sl slide, slider, tilt. So they work kind of the same, but let's, let me show you a sliding window. Uh, Sliding windows are very popular because 
you can get the maximum amount of egress out of them. So, uh, you know, basically it works like a sliding glass door pretty much. And uh, so you can slide these open uh, and you can actually, if you get the tilt type, you can tilt these open and you just hop right out if there's a fire and so forth. So uh, keep that in mind when you're, when you're using this. You can go with these uh, very inexpensive project source windows. I think they're about $50, $60. Let's see what it says here, $74. So they've went up a little bit, of course, with everything else, $78. So this is the type of window that I have in my basement where I've added uh, the bedrooms in the basement. And this is also the type of windows that I have in my tiny house as well, uh, mainly because at the time they were fairly inexpensive. I paid maybe $50 for it at the time, and that was about a year ago. So right now, every, you know, prices of everything is getting crazy. And, uh, you know, the windows that I showed you in my office uh, are... I paid fifty dollars a piece for those too, so you know I got a, I got those at a steal. However, because the pandemic had set in, I had to wait for like three months before they made them. They're, the windows right now are like everything else; it's just crazy waiting for uh, you know waiting for them to to be manufactured. They can't manufacture them fast enough, and the housing market right now, the housing boom is just going crazy, and I'm so afraid that we're going to end up crashing like we did back in 07. So. Bay windows and bow windows. So let's look at a bay window and a bow window. So bay windows usually come as a unit. They can't, this is not a unit. And so that's the kind of, of windows that I actually did in my house. And as a matter of fact, we'll, we'll take another tour here right quick. And uh, let's see, maybe, I guess I should have just stayed on here and left it connected. There. All right, so let's go into the living room here, the front room. If I can turn this around, how do I turn it around? There we go. So uh, the dogs have chewed up our, we did have cushions here, but the dogs have chewed them up. So this is a bay window here. Now, originally, now remember that this house was the house that I grew up in and my parents had built it in 66. These three windows right here used to be flat right across through here. And my daughter decided she would like to have a window seat where she could get in there and read. And so basically I just built a, a triangular wall in here, took these very windows, these very windows actually set here and placed them uh, into the wall that I had built here. Now we've got, you know, underneath it, there's a, you know, a storage where we keep all the Christmas crap and, uh, there is, uh, there was some cushions. The dogs decided they want them for supper. And so uh, we don't have any cushions. I gotta have some new cushions made. But that gives you an idea of a bay window that is not a unit. And let me show you what it looks like outside. So outside again, you can see, you know, I've got siding down here and basically just built walls around it and stuck the windows in there. It gives you an idea of those. While I'm thinking about it, let me just go around here and show you this sliding window. My son works nights uh, at the prison, so he's asleep. I don't want to bother him. But the window in his bedroom is a sliding window. We, uh, we basically uh, cut the brick in here. So this was a garage. And we cut the brick in here and placed this window in there and it's a sliding window it's four foot by four foot meaning that when it's open i have enough that he can get out of that bedroom if there's a fire or everything so windows play a big big uh part of of being able to leave a bedroom a bedroom must have two ways of egress one obviously is you know down the hall and out the front door but the second 
must be, uh, you know, through a window or something, unless you have a door. And in our bedroom now, we have, I have two huge windows up here that I went ahead and placed in there. These are big enough that I can, well, even though the bed's in the way, and I could get my fat ass out of here if I needed to. So a double hung window that is large enough that I can egress out of here. But of course, our bedroom has a door on it. This used to be a screened in porch and now it's the office. And so I, I can get out. So I have a secondary way of getting out of here. Now, like I said, I paid $50 for all of these windows, each, 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 uh, $50 a piece. The smaller windows over here on the end, I think I paid maybe $40, it wasn't much. But again, I had to wait four months to, to get the windows. So that gives you an idea on that. Now, I'm gonna switch back over and I'm just gonna leave this on. Nah, ain't work. That's what I was afraid of. Sorry about that, guys. Hey, back. Okay, so you can also buy these uh, bay windows as a unit. So this is already sold completely as a unit. And as a matter of fact, the house that I'm working on today uh, has one of those type of windows. So I have specced it in here. And so it's going to have a 3-0, 3-0 window that is going to be operational. This is a double hung window, three foot by three foot. And then it's going to have a one foot four by 3-0 fixed window on either side of it. So you can kind of see on the drawing, if I can find that. Yeah, this will look like this. So this is the unit here, and then they will fabricate a roof over top of this since it sticks out. So this will be, uh, this roof here will be built on site, uh, and there will be no floor on this. So the countertop will be at this height. She wants something to place her windows, her uh, plants and stuff and whatever. So uh, behind the kitchen sink, then, uh, you know, she'll have an area here that she can, you uh, put stuff. Uh, and so when I when I spec that on the window schedule, uh, here it is, I have one, let me pull that a little bit, you have one uh, nominal size, 143, 3030, 143, fixed, double hung, fixed. Uh, maybe in this particular case, I'm, I'm specking out uh, gelled wind windows. And then for the rough opening, because it is a specially built window, then I'm going to have to, you know, I'm going to have to ask them for the, uh, the rough opening at the time. Now, when we look at some of these other windows that I have spec'd out here, a 3050 twin, um, let's see where that one is, should be the first one to the left. There we go. Five, a 3050 twin, which is a double hung window, looks like that, that's the, that's the window. So both of them, this is sold as a unit. You don't buy this window and then buy this window. This window is made uh, from the manufacturer in that type of form. So when you're looking on uh, your uh, sizing charts and each one of the, the manufacturers have their own sizing chart, uh, then you, know, you, can, you can look up here, get close to what you want and then go from there. Uh, so they do have double units, a twin unit, and they have triple units. And I think they may have a four unit. Yes, they do. What about five units? Five units. Yes, they do. What about six units? Nope, we get into the picture windows. So uh, these old picture windows, which are what I referred to as transom windows. So these windows can go right over top of these windows and uh, you have that. So basically you can, you can buy this whole huge unit here that's gonna be dang near 12 foot long. Uh, this one is over 12 foot long <coughs> and put it in your house as one single unit. Now that's a nightmare putting these larger window units in and the, you know, when you, when you're going, let me go back down. But you also got to think about 
you know, this has to have a lintel over it so that it spans across through there. And that's why <coughs> a lot of cases, let me see if I've got another one up here. Not that one, I'm not that one. Got too many drawings out. I think it's in this one. No, not that one either. We're going to spend the day looking up different notes. Oh, different house plans, no. Um, so this particular house here is a, uh, it's, it's a, like a pole barn house and it may take a minute for it to, to upload because it's a pretty big size house. It is going to take a little bit here. Bear with me, this thing will open up, I promise. Not that I have too much open down here already. Hopefully it won't lock everything down. There we go. Now we're moving. Okay. So you can see this is a monstrosity of a house, but I want you to notice what it did here. So instead of doing a single unit here, I did two units. I did uh, two individual double hung windows with a post in the middle of it that, that carries the weight. So you can kind of get an idea. Uh, the, let's see, is that the same one? Okay, so here is a twin unit. Notice how small that the, the, um, the middle piece here is. But then this is two separate units and there's a post in the middle of it to carry the weight of this wall. So that way uh, I don't have, you know, these I can do cheaper uh, a lot of times than I can when I have to, then using these uh, double uh, twin models. Uh, and then in this case, they're, they're also putting a triple in. Uh, and so it's, you know, this is quite the house here that they're going to be building. And again, it is a, um, it's a pole barn house, meaning that they, they start with these six by six posts. And then you have the, uh, a steel, it looks like that, you have a steel, uh, rafter that goes up with uh, six uh, two by six purlins on it. This is a this is a this has been around for a while, but it is getting very popular because there's no plywood involved in the building of this house. And if anybody's went down to Lowe's lately and tried to <coughs> uh, to price plywood right now, it's you know it's running seventy eighty dollars a piece, and that's just nuts. So that gives you an idea of a, uh, a bay window. And there again, that's that little roof that I was showing you on the other one. And let's go for a bow window. No, let's go for a O window. Bow window. Bow window, there we go. Peachers. All right, so a bow window is, again, a solid unit. This is one window, even though it's made up of different facets. It is one window. And it, it goes in a circle or a semicircle rather than this, the bay uses the triangular method. So that, that you know, that's, that gives you an idea there. I'm not a very big fan of these type of windows. I don't know why. I just don't like the look of them. Um, I have never drawn a house that had a bow window in it. Most of the time, it, it, you know, if anything, they had a bay window in it. But uh, that gives you an idea of what a bow window is. So let's talk about glazing. Glazing is another fancy term like uh, fenestration for glass. And there gives you the type of glazings that are offered today. We have the, the single, which this is not single. This is double, this is triple, and this is a quad. I don't know why they're labeling it this differently. 
this actually is two pieces of glass. If it were single, it'd just be one piece of glass like this one here. So that's a single, a double, and a triple. I don't know what kind of crazy mess they're trying to show you here, but we'll go with this one. So single, double, triple. I've never seen a quad window. And so most of the time, these windows are, uh, you know, they're one solid window, like what I showed you of mine. And then they put these little mullions on there to make it look like uh, that it is, you know, different windows. Now, let's, let's look at this window right here for a second. All right, so these are uh, generally what was used in the past. These are historical, and these have been around since the beginning of Windows, this type here. These are called true divided light. And remember that term, because you'll see it again. True divided light, meaning that they have mullions in here, back and forth, and these are small little individual panes of glass. Now, what's so important about this? Number one, if you break one of them, you just have to replace one of them. You don't have to replace the whole unit, all right? Two, they were easier to make. So smaller pieces of glass were easier to make and transport uh, than this great big huge thing. And you've seen those funky looking trucks going down the highway um, that uh, have those uh, glass moving, that have those big, uh, sides on it that, uh, you know, so they can move glass. That's a glass moving truck there. So, you know, back in the day, uh, you know, the horse and buggy would have not had something like this, number one, because there were no paved roads. Number two, horse and buggy is, is, has no shocks on it whatsoever. And so larger pieces of glass would have been torn to pieces and never made it to their destination. So that's why we go with, that's why they went with a double uh, or a true divided glass there. So uh, one of the things to make this glass was to make float glass. So what they done was they, they had water and they basically poured, you know, molten glass on this. And as it went out through here, then it would solidify. And in most cases, let me see if I can find a good picture. Um, I may have to change the term a little bit. Let's go uh, to clear and nail, more manufacturing furnace fan, tempered sheet. Now let's go with uh, old. Uh, spelt fashion wrong. Old fashioned float glass, and that's not what I want either. Uh, let's try putting in plate glass. See if that gets us any better. Still not good. Anyway, float glass, original float glass, uh, it has a, a weird, there we go. It has a weird effect on it. There you go. That is an original uh, antique float glass. Sorry, let me close the door. Can I show you what? I know it was too good to be true. Okay, so, you know, float glass gives you that, you know, that funky looking appeal to it. I mean, it's just because it was poured on wavy water and, you know, that was the best that they had at the day. And it, get, it lets light in. You can see if somebody's, you know, in the neighborhood or whatever. However, you know, you're not going to get a very clear picture. You're going to be able to, you know, read the, the, the sign, at the, you know, as, as they go by trying to sell their snake oils and stuff. So that gives you an idea of float glass. Now, uh, the glass that we have today is very much, uh, you know, I mean, heck, you can polish it up and it looks like there's no glass in there. All the time people are walking through sliding glass doors and stuff. So, you know, glass technology has really improved there. So let's talk about tempered glass. Um, so there are many different types of glass and you have you have tempered glass, you have regular glass, and you have uh, let's safety glass, we'll call it. So let's, uh, let me pull out, uh, let me just look up broken glass. Okay, so broken glass, 
when uh, when most glass breaks, if it's not tempered, it's going to have large shards in it like that right there. Um, and, and this can cut people in a heartbeat. So uh, certain times they uh, the code requires that you have other than plate glass. We call this plate glass. And uh, so this is, you know, it's going to break in shards and, you know, it's not going to be the, the nicest thing in the world to you in, in, in the end. However, tempered glass broken breaks into little bitty shards, just tiny, tiny, tiny shards. So there you go. There's a, a piece of float glass or plate glass, which you have these big knife shards which will cut you all to pieces. And then you have fragments of tempered glass. So the tempered glass is what you have on the sides and the rear of your car. Uh, and when they break, they, they uh, so this is heat treated. Uh, and when it, so when it breaks, it, it, it becomes very brittle and it just breaks into tiny stuff. It will still cut you, but it won't cut up into jugular vein and, and you'll die from that. So. Uh, this is a little bit safer for that. Now, what about safety glass? Safety glass, spell it right. Safety glass is, you know, there's different forms of safety glass. Safety glass uh, that has, didn't want to do that. Safety glass that has uh, uh, the wire in it so that it, you know, it doesn't break. Or what is in your car, let's just look at broken windshield. So there you go, a broken windshield. So you notice that it does not fall apart at all. Now there's no metal in here, but what there is, is a very thin piece of plastic laminate in there, like, uh, you know, uh, a sheet of, of plastic that's in there. So, uh, and that's why we call this uh, laminate glass sometimes, because it is made so that anything hits your window, it's not going to leave you uh, in the, um, it's not going to leave you in the wind and the, and the elements as you're going down the road. It's going to give you some sort of protection on that. So again, the sides and back windows are tempered glass, meaning when, when they break, they break into small shards. And then uh, your, your front windshield is safety glass uh, or laminate glass. So uh, that gives you an idea of that. Now, why do we need to have tempered glass in a house? So let's look at this. Let me see if I can find this drawing that had that. Not that one. Probably that one. Yes. Okay. Notice that this window here says it's a two four two o oh, or two foot four inch by three foot two inch tall twin tempered window. And so is this one here. Why? Because there's a tub. So anytime that you have a window that is within arm's reach or 36 inches of a tub or shower. So we've got even one in, no, this is a trans. This, uh, this is going to be a tempered window, meaning that if you stood up and you slipped and fall and you fell out this window, it would shatter into small shards and not uh, into a big thing. Now, what about this transit window? What Does it not have to be? No, it does not. Because when we look at a transom window, it is a high window. You're not going to fall up and out of this thing, not unless you're on a ladder or something. So it does not have to be tempered. Only when the, the windows have to be a certain height does it have to be uh, tempered. Now, anytime that it, you know, a regular window that is, you know, 36 inches or closer to the ground in a room where it has a shower or a tub, uh, then it has to be tempered. Uh, we don't have one on that one and there's no second floor. So yeah, this is the only one. This is the only tempered windows that we have in there only because of this big tub here. Uh, so we don't, you know, we don't want somebody slipping and falling out of this thing. Now let's look at something else. Let's look at, uh, let's look at this window here. 
All right, so this is actually a sliding glass door, but sliding glass doors are made by window manufacturers. They're not made by door manufacturers. This has to be tempered. So, you know, if, if somebody were to run into this, uh, then it's going to shatter into tiny, tiny pieces. It's not going to hurt somebody. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie uh, Ghost with um, Patrick Swayze. Yes, Patrick Swayze and Demi Moore in it. Uh, at the end, you know, the guy gets it, the window breaks and he, he's halfway out of it and it cuts him in half. So um, any window that is less than 20 inches, I believe it is, from the floor, then it has to be tempered. Now, why? what's 20 inches got to do with it? Generally, 20 inches is somewhere around uh, the height of the center of the back of your knee, meaning that if you backed into this window uh, and fell out of it because your knees are at that about this point, then all of this is going to shatter into tiny shards and it's not going to be a guillotine and cut you in half or cut your head off. That gives you an idea about that. So egress, let's talk about the egress a little bit more. So when you're looking in your charts uh, for your sizes, when you're looking through these, you will see a notation E1, E4, E3. That means egress. So if you go down here at the bottom, you will see that an E1 unit has an egress destination of five square feet with a seal stop, but not with a DP50 uh, seal stop. Don't know what the DP50 seal stop is, but so there's different square footages requirements. North Carolina has a four square foot uh, des egress designation. And um, sorry about that. Not on my game today, am I? Um, so, uh, so we can go with with windows that are that do not have the E designation on it because, like again, North Carolina only requires four square feet, not five square feet. However, there's some catches on that. Uh, in North Carolina, on my pen. Oh, don't tell me I've lost my pen again. On the floor. I had this burger two days ago when I had class. The cats get up here and knock everything down. You think it? Found it. You'd think also that I clean my dang office too. So now I'm done for what I was talking about. Oh yeah, egress. Uh, so there's a couple of things that have to be taken into consideration in North Carolina. So yes, we have to have four square feet of opening. So that means this has to be four square feet. However, there is a minimum height of 20 inches and a minimum width of 24 inches. All right, so you can't get four square feet by, multi by multiplying these two together. As a matter of fact, what is that? 20 inches times 24 inches equals 3.3 square feet. So one of these dimensions has to be greater. All right, so we still have to have four square feet in here, but the minimum height is 20 inches, the minimum width is 24 inches. So meaning one of these has to be bigger for us to get four square feet. Not as easy as it sounds, but we can go through here and we can find out because they always give us uh, the, the daylight opening uh, in here so that we can go in here and see, you know, this opens up this far 
on this side and this far on this side. And that will, you know, give us, well, let's see, on this particular window here, we have 28 one sixteenth, 28 inches and one sixteenth. Remind me, I need to talk to you about units too. And 27 inches and 11 sixteenths. That gives us five square feet. So let's go a little smaller. Here's another one that doesn't have the E designation to it. So we have 32 and 1 16th, 32 inches and 1 16th times uh, 20, let's go with the yeah, 20 and 11 16ths. Whoops, 20 and 11 16ths. Change over to feet, that gives us four square feet. So we can use, which one was it? We can use this window here in North Carolina, even though it does not have the egress designation on it from the manufacturer. Okay, so that, that meets the, the code. So we could use that window. Energy. Okay, so when we're talking about uh, energy, as far as windows are concerned, windows are a very weak point in a house. So last or Tuesday, we talked about insulation. And we talked about the U factor that, um, that we're talking about in a house. So, you know, here we've got a house and, you know, we've got a nice house that has, uh, we'll say that it has the minimum, uh, R13 plus two and a half uh, for the walls. And then we're gonna stick a whole bunch of windows in it. All right, and these windows are rated at about uh, 0.33 U, which is equal to an R being 3.03. .03. Now. Wait, we got something, we've got a 15 and a half R value on all this wall, and then we're gonna drill holes in it all over the place so that we can stick windows in it. Well, we gotta live, you know, we can't live in a dungeon. So yes, there's gonna be some uh, repercussions uh, for, you know, having windows in there. However, there are places that you wanna be able to put the windows and there's things that you wanna be able to, to do to these windows uh, in order for them to be very uh, energy efficient for you. Number one, uh, find out which is north, south, east, and west on the house. Uh, by doing so, then uh, we can figure out which side is going to be best to have windows on it. Now, let's say that, uh, actually, I'm just going to pull up a, a, a house plan here, and we'll do it that way. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so uh, quite good. All right, so here we have a house and we'll say that north is up. And so all of these windows that are over here on the north side here, there are going to be energy leakages. So, you know, in the winter time, we're going to have heat wanting to radiate out of these windows and doors uh, because this is generally the coldest side of the house. All right, so we've got windows on the west and we've got windows on the east here. And what's gonna happen here? All right, so all year round as the sun, uh, the sun's gonna come up in the, in, the, uh, in the east and it's going to go around and it's going to set in the west. So what does that mean? All year round, we're going to have sunlight coming in. Now it's okay in the wintertime, you know, we want to have that heat gain in the wintertime, but not in the summertime. Uh, I can tell you right now on my house, uh, the back of my house faces west. And every evening we sit down and I can just feel the heat just penetrating into those windows. Now, you got to remember that when the house was built in 1966, uh, energy efficientness was who the hell was it? What was energy efficientness? You know, gasoline was about 20 cents a gallon and nobody really cared because it was, it was, it was nothing. So, uh, so things have changed over the, over the, the, the eons so that we're more energy conscious now. So again, uh, windows on, you want to limit your windows on the, uh, the east and west sides because they have heat gain 
all year round because the sun comes up and sets in the east and the west and there's no way to really protect these windows. Now, what about the windows in the south? Well, the windows in the south can be protected. And in this case, I, I have put a great big old covered porch across this thing. So even though this is very long here, uh, let me back up and go to this other one. Even though this is, you know, this is nine foot here, we're not going to have any heat gain even, even in the wintertime here. So uh, certain things that, you know, if we were having a passive solar house, we, went, we might want to rethink this and pull a shorter porch or a shorter uh, shade in here so that we can get a little bit of winter gain in there. So let's look at uh, window shading. And there's many different types of window shades that we can use on there. Obviously we can buy some, uh, we can buy some old crappy things from Amazon, you know, and put on here Bahama shutters and, you know, exterior rolling blinds. These are on the inside. These are on the, uh, are these on the inside? I believe, no, they're on that. I don't know whether they're, they may be. One of these is on the inside. One of them's on the outside. And I don't remember which one it is. Uh, and you get other types of, you know, little, little dainty stuff. Of course, porches, uh, awnings, uh, trellises, uh, also known as, uh, oh, just lost it. I hate when that happens. Okay, it'll come back to me. Uh, and then, of course, you can do any kind of other type of little shutters and so forth. But there are other types that, that you know, that are very simple uh, and actually add a little bit of, uh, of decor to the, the structure itself. And you will see these uh, in, in incorporated into designs of buildings, especially in big, tall buildings. They want to have lots of light get in there so they don't have to use uh, the, uh, you know, the lights and so forth. But at the same time, if you've ever been in a storefront window where the sun's just barreling in there, it can be very uncomfortable. So different types of solar shades can be put in there. Now, these type of solar shades like this, they, uh, they are used one time a year, and that's in the summertime. Because in the wintertime, as the sun goes down, the sun is allowed to enter that window, and then we can get some uh, we can get some solar gain through that window in the wintertime, especially like these type here. I really like those type there. So there's tons of different types of shading options out there. Here's an idea. You may see some of these at different places. If uh, you ever go to Zaxby's, as a matter of fact, let me let me just pull up Zaxby's. Zaxby's restaurant image. Okay, so Zaxby's has incorporated uh, different shades on their buildings. This is not exactly the si type of shade that the one in Morganton has. Uh, yeah, right there we go. This is what Morganton has. Matter of fact, this is the one in Morganton. Uh, so this is a solar shade here. It's just a metal uh, shade that goes over the windows. Works really well. Uh, when the sun gets low in the sky in the wintertime, then you can get some light in there and gain a little bit of, of heat in there. But, you know, so this was in Nashville, Tennessee. And, uh, you know, it's, it's also got some shading on there as well. You see a lot of these type of window shades at the beach as well. Other types of little bitty solar shades. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, one is, let me show you this, if I can get into this real quickly without spending a whole lot of time looking. If you ever get a chance, go over to uh, Birch Building and uh, let's see. Eight. take forever to load.
And of course, it's not going to give me what I want because it's too far down the line. There we go. See it. Ah! All right. Go down there to the Birch Building. This is Birch Building. And look at the uh, look at the greenhouse that we built. This is another type of solar shade here. These are solar louvers, which means that they are uh, they are at a certain uh, angle. So here's the building going down, and the sun, of course, gets over here gets pretty bad, and so these are at an angle at such so that when the sun is high up in the sky in the summertime, then the sun does not get through these. And I didn't draw that close enough together, but you get the idea. So the sun will not penetrate this, but then when it's down low in the sky here, it can penetrate uh, those louvers. So that gives you an idea of how that works as well. And uh, so you can see, you know, this, we're getting a little bit of sun. This is probably about April, no, February, I mean, September. So September, uh, you know, is in the fall and we're, you know, we're starting to get a little bit of daylight coming through those and you can kind of get an idea of how that works. So those are stationary. They do not move, only the sun moves. And there's my students uh, building these things and it worked out really well. You also have what is called blackout blinds. Uh, and um, let's see, solar, solar curtains. Solar curtains sometimes have a foil type uh, facing on it. And this can be, again, in your favor, both summer and winter. Uh, the solar curtains go on the outside in the summertime and on the inside in the wintertime to reflect heat that may be uh, trying to penetrate through the windows. And so this is one of the ways that we're going to combat our bus uh, because the windows are the weakest link, obviously, in a bus and they're not insulated. They're just a single pane tempered glass. So uh, we're going to use solar curtains on all of these and solar quilts. So you have solar curtains and you have solar quilts. Um, solar system, solar, uh, solar wind, let's call them window quilts, not solar, sorry. Window quilts. So window quilts are another type of, of um, well, these are just showing me. There we go. Window quilt. So a window quilt is basically just an insulated, thick insulated piece of material which pulls down. Uh, and in some cases, uh, and, and what we're going to do in the bus is we're going to sew uh, Velcro onto the sides and the bottom so that when they're rolled down, I can just press them in there <coughs> and they give me a, a semi uh, you know, air, uh, air tightness uh, effect on those windows, which can greatly help uh, keeping uh, the cold out in this bus. So in the summertime, we're going to have solar curtains uh, that are um, so, yeah, 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 solar curtains, which will, and there'll be two rods here that pulls down and uh, one will be the solar curtain, which is kind of like foil. It's, it's mylar actually. And then we'll also have the, uh, the quilt. Now the quilt can work in both favors, both summer and winter. Uh, if we're running the air conditioner, it can definitely keep the cold air in. We're not gonna have the, you know, the curtains down all day long because we wanna see stuff out. But if we're gone, we can pull them down, keep people from looking in and keep the bus nice and uh, cool while we're away.
Uh, another type of, of way of, of using uh, windows in which we have a good energy efficientness on it is called low E windows or low E Mississippi. So um, E Mississippi means that there is a coating on the window that eliminates UV light from coming in the windows. And that is what low E means. So uh, low E is on all windows. You, you can't buy windows today, to my knowledge, uh, that do not have the low E Mississippi on there. And the word E Mississippi, and that's why we call it low E is because the, the word E Mississippi is so freaking long uh, that we just call it low E windows. And uh, they all have them now. So uh, some of the uh, really uh gung-ho energy people down in raleigh wanted to fight the low e window saying that it you know for a passive solar home we lost too much uh gain out of it in the winter time uh to justify it for the summertime but they they fought it and fought it and they've not gotten anywhere so all low e windows are all windows in every house in North Carolina now must be low E, low E Mississippi, meaning that it stops the transfer of UV light. Turn these on while I'm thinking about it. All right, so there's tons of different uh, installation, installation videos and stuff on here. So I'm not going to bore you with, uh, you know, telling it to you again. I just want you to look at these and uh, you can go through and make your own judgments. And then, of course, do the quiz on Windows. Uh, if, you, if any of you, of course, have any questions whatsoever, uh, please don't hesitate to, you know, give me a holler and, uh, and, and let me know how I can help you on this. So let's take a small break. When we come back, we're going to talk about DOAs. Okay, we'll continue our pursuit with fenestrations. So I've got a question from Austin saying that he's having some trouble Finding some of the terms, the woodworking terms, uh, any advice on that? Yes. So when you're looking for these terms, look up old English uh, woodworking term and then give it. So you'll notice that some of them talk about, um, let me just go up here and open this up right quick. Define woodworking terms. All right, so uh, when you're looking at, when you're looking these up, again, look up and you'll notice here I have size on these stuff right through here. So uh, they will, if you look up old English terms, woodworking terms, plank size, deal size, board size, you should be able to find these. So. Uh, in the old uh, in the old days, uh, when they when you talk about a plank or a board or a batten, they actually referred to it as a certain size of piece of wood. Uh, you know, nowadays we think a board is a board. Anything is a board, uh, whether it's a big board or a small board. So, uh, what I'm trying to do is kind of get you into uh, some of the terms that were used, and still you may see them and hear them from time to time. Uh, in there. So when you look through these bulk, uh, you know, again, add the word uh, woodworking term or old English woodworking term, and uh, you should be able to go through here and find all of these. As a matter of fact, uh, I've got several people, I've got, I've only had seven people turn them in, but I think out of the seven that have turned them in, probably about six 
uh, five or six have have 100% all the terms. So they can be found. Google is your friend and uh, you, you will, uh, you can find them, I promise you. But, uh, you know, if you're one of the other 10 that have not turned in that, uh, I would get on it. Uh, so next week, starting Monday, which is just four days away, I'm going to go into the grade book and I'm going to erase the uh, exempt all empty uh, grades. So when you go into the grade book, if you, you know, next week you go and open it up, you're making an A today and you open it up next Monday and all of a sudden you're making an F, that's because you've maybe have only done one assignment and every, all of those empty grades are now going to uh, be charged against you. So get on it. You know, we've only got a week uh, left of the semester. And so I don't want you to see you guys get a, a bad grade because you've procrastinated for the past 16 weeks. All right, so let's talk about doors. And again, there's a lot of... Uh, of different uh, things that you can open up here and, uh, you know, just tons of different stuff that I have uh, put up here for you guys for your benefit. So let's go and let's start talking about doors. So when we think about doors, uh, and I'm going to take about, uh, I'm going to talk about exterior doors uh, to start with, and then we'll talk about interior doors. So exterior doors, can be a ton of different things. And, you know, some can be very beautiful. Uh, some can be very plain. Uh, you know, any, any number of different things, different types of doors can be done. Uh, and, you know, so, the, you know, it's, it's just the, the uh, you know, it's left up to your imagination, really. So uh, real quickly, I'm going to show you uh, one of my doors, or actually I'll just show you a couple of doors and we'll talk about um, different doors right here real quickly. So I'm going to turn this off and mute myself and then sign on my phone again. Okay. Take a walk here. All right. So, um, typical doors, like the door in my office here, this is not that true divided light that I was telling you about. You can tell that this is one great big sheet of glass in here, very dirty, by the way, I might say. And then this little plastic grid is put across it. So this particular door is an external steel door, and it comes with a pre-cut for a deadbolt. And uh, this is considered a half glass two panel door, and this is steel. So this is the best type of door that you can get. Now, this is not a hollow door. This door here has insulation inside of it. So it is also an energy efficient door. Now the door to, which was originally my, my external door here, turn on this light here where you can see, this is also a two panel door, half glass. However, it has this, these blinds that are on the inside. So I can, I can open them. I can raise them. And this is just a little magnetic thing, and it's super strong, and I can't get it off right now. But basically, you know, I don't have to have, you know, there's no track here. It's just glass, and this is magnetic, and it stays on there. And uh, then, you know, I can open and close this, and it's totally inside the glass. So that way I can clean the glass totally, and I've taken the, the deadbolt out off of that. 
I wanted to show you my front door. So my front door is considered a full glass door. It is uh, also metal. No, this one is fiberglass. I'll take that back. This is fiberglass. But what I've done is I have cut a tree and I have glued it onto the glass. So there's actually two trees on here that are uh, mirrored. And so from the outside, you have the tree, get, out, get myself out of the way here. And then on the inside, we have the tree. So it's really a cool little effect. And so this is a full glass and it has no uh, grid on it whatsoever. So let's go look at the next door. This is my kitchen. So this is a full glass door with grid. Again, the grid is, you know, it's just taped, I mean, it's just on there. It's not uh, true divided light. So uh, again, this is a steel door and with the full glass on it. Now let's go downstairs. This door here, which is not a door, you know, we don't use it as a door anymore. It's a, you know, we've taken it, we've hang, hung it on the side there. And we've put different pictures from different experiences in different places in the country that we've been to. And this is a true divided glass door. So this door here is made of wood and you can see how the mullions are put together here. And then each individual piece of glass is placed in there and then on the back side of it, uh, the, uh, the, the, the caulk and everything. And I'll explain all of those in just a minute. But that gives you an idea of what a true divided glass uh, door looks like, even though it's, it's an art piece now. <laughs> okay, so this is a double door. This is a full glass double door. We, we call this a French door because they both open, you know, the same way, but this is what is considered a left-hand dominant door. I don't even know if I can get this one open. It don't, we haven't opened it so long. So these have little, little buttons. Yeah, okay. So, you know, we have to get big furniture in here then both of these doors can be opened. And from the outside, this side is the dominant door. So when we're thinking about the dominant door, when we're talking about right and left, we stand on the outside of the house and this is my left hand. So this is a left-hand dominant, meaning that the right-hand door has an asterisk. Remember that term? There's that asterisk on there. And it is not as easy to open up as, I don't even know if I can get this one to work at all. Okay, we ain't gonna worry about that. Okay, so the left hand dominant side. Now, let's go back upstairs. Actually, no. I want to show you one more door. Uh, so this is an external door that leads to our garage. It is an insulated door and it's a, uh, it's a hollow door, but it has a solid insulation in it. And this is considered a six P or six panel door. One, two, three, four, five, six panels in it. And so this is also a steel door. And uh, actually it sounded kind of hollow, didn't it? But it's, it is an insulated door. And uh, so these are sold pre-hung, meaning that this brick mold comes already on there. Six panel door, notice that it doesn't have the, the dead bolt in there. Let's go back upstairs. Let's 
go back to the front door here. So actually, no, it's go, there's too much light coming in. Let's go back to the bedroom. All right. So is this a right-hand door or a left-hand door? So to determine that, what we do is we put our butt on the door that has the hinges. And then whatever side it's on, in this case, it's my left hand. This is a left hand door. This opens in. Most of them do open in. Now the office door. Put my butt against the door on the hinge side. This is also a left hand door, but it's an outswing door. All right, so this is outside. And my door opens to the out, so therefore it is an outswing door. Sometimes you'll hear this called reverse, but for the most part, it is an outward or outswing door. You also have sliding doors. Uh, and upward acting doors in a house. So let's talk about interior doors. This is a flush door. That's it. That's what you call it, it's just a flush door. It is a hollow door. And if you look very closely, it's made up of a very thin piece of Luan. And then it has this outer piece of wood that runs along the outside of the door. But inside, in here, there's nothing more than, uh, um, I can see it in my head, cardboard. So there's basically just cardboard that runs in a Z pattern down through here that keeps this side from collapsing on this side. And so that's just an idea. So we put, you know, a very thin piece of wood down through here around the frame, but then we get to here there's a larger piece of wood in here. And then we've got a small piece of wood at the bottom and a small piece of wood at the top. This was sold as a slab. It's called a door slab. This was a pre-hung door. It has the frame. It has the casing. All of it sold together. The hinges are already on there. All you do is slide it into your opening and then put some, uh, some screws in there, put your trim on the inside of it, and you're done deal. When you buy a door slab, you have to build the frame. The frame goes all the way around. So this consists of the frame itself, and then you have the door stop, which, you know, just nothing more than stops the door. Stops the door so that the door don't keep going. And then you have your trim. Sorry, you still there? Okay, sorry, I dropped the phone. <laughs> All right, so you got your trim that goes around the door. All right, so this is, you know, this does not come as a pre-hung door. You can buy pre-hung interior doors, but this one here is not a pre-hung door. And that gives you an idea. These are called swing doors, by the way, because obviously they swing. And they come in a variety of different sizes. Let's go in here and look at this door here. What the hell is going on with this door here? Well, this is a very old five panel door. One, two, three, four, five. And you can see how it's made up. This actually came out of my wife's grandmother's house. <coughs> And it is comprised of styles and rails. And so all of these little bitty pieces here are put together. And you can see that's falling apart. Uh, she actually went out in the woods and pulled this thing out. And we incorporated it in, into our closet door. And so, you know, it's just, you know, it's a, a, a piece of memorability that came out of her grandmother's house. It's rotten. I had to go in here and actually put big old uh log screws in here to hold the thing together but it you know it's kind of a it, it serves its purpose the cats can uh, can get away from the dogs for a minute 
and you know it just it's a conversation piece it's you know it's our whole house is you know made up of just all kinds of little bitty nicks and shrinks and trinkets and stuff so let's go on here and talk about another door so this is our pantry and it's a very small door this is a 2-0 door and a 2-0 door is about as small as you get but where's the door let's turn the inside on so this like i say this is our pantry so where's the door the door is actually on the inside so i i took a door that we existed that existed in the home and just made a new door out of it. This is called a pocket door. So it has a little track up here at the top and the door disappears into the wall. Now there's a funny story behind some of this. So I have two pocket doors in my house, this one and the one into our closet. So this is our walk-in closet and we have the, the pocket door here. And the funny story is when I was putting this drywall up, I used a screw that was very long and I screwed the door in place. So you have to rethink this when you're using these type of doors because you've only got just a little bit of space here before you get to the door itself and my screw went on through here and just penetrated the door. So oops on me. All right, so one more door I wanna show you and I'm gonna go ahead and warn you right now. My son's bedroom looks like the devil himself has lived in there. Typical young man and dear God, here we go. Jeez, look at this place, I can't believe it. Okay, so this is a sliding door. So the sliding door, I can't even close the dang thing. There's so much crap in here. So these two doors pass by each other and they also have a track, but there's a double track up there. And so these doors can slide all the way, both ways, they can pass each other. And this is called a sliding door. Bless his heart needs to get a life, he needs to go a girlfriend. Anybody out there knows, get him a girlfriend, maybe that'll change him. Okay, so that is all of the different types of doors that I have in my house. I do not have a bifold door, but I'm gonna show you a bifold door. We hate bifold doors. I gotta go through here and turn all the lights off. Bifold doors can be very problematic, so we just don't like bifold doors a lot. Mr. Hurley, you're muted still. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. I thought I clicked it, but it didn't. So, uh, you know, you got your French doors, you got your single swing doors, uh, half glass, or this is a quarter glass. Uh, this is a four panel glass, full glass, half glass. Uh, so, you know, there's different terms on this, you know, all over the place. And some of them can be, you know, really cool uh, doors, uh, kind of a, 1960s look at the price tag on that sucker um you know not gonna go with that door so you know it's you can uh again it's just the your imagination for doors okay so let's talk about interior doors more three panel four pa five panel six panel two panel uh, tons of just, you know, different type of panel doors. Uh, and then of course the door, like I showed you to, um, our bedroom is a flush door. Awesome. 
Okay, so a bifold door, uh, you can get bifold doors in an, in an exist, I mean, an exterior type situation. I personally have never seen one. Uh, but, uh, you know, I just, you know, the, the hassle that the, the bifold door, let's, let's go in here, bifold closet door. Let's put it that way. Uh, the hassle that you end up with in a bifold door inside of a house, I would hate to think uh, what kind of crap you're gonna have to put up with with an exterior bifold door because they bind up. They especially if you've got you know carpet on here. If any of these uh, joints start sagging, get weak, then it's it's just a mess. You, you don't want to have to mess with this. And a bifold door are kind of going the way of the dodo bird. Nobody wants them anymore. So. Uh, try to steer clear. As a matter of fact, the last couple of times that I've designed it in a house, and the only reason I designed it in a house is because what they give me showed a bifold door. In other words, uh, let me give you an example here. I don't know if he... They, they give me these drawings like that right there. And let's see. One of these seemed like it did have a bifold door in it. No. Which one is that one? Yes. So it showed a bifold door in here, but that the first thing they well, first thing out of their mouth was, I don't want a bifold door. So basically when I started on the design of it, <coughs> excuse me, I took the bifold doors out and just put a swing door in there. And they were much happier with that for sure. So bifold doors are not America's favorite door. Door types and see what I'm missing. Bifold pocket accordion. Here today, I've been running around all over the house. 81 degrees outside, too. Okay, so an awning door. You may see these sometimes in conference areas uh, because they're, you know, they easily separate uh, rooms, walls to make rooms, but you will see those in a house. <clears throat> it was kind of a 70s thing. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's not a modern day thing in a house, but you can kind of get an idea of what it looks uh, like and how it affects a room. Again, you can take, you know, a large room and you can cut it into very, very small sections with an accordion door. Sliding door, we haven't talked about sliding patio doors. Sliding patio doors are, again, a type of door that is made by the glass company. And, you know, they come in tons of different sizes, shapes, looks. Uh, and, you know, they just, they just come and come and come. You can get them to where they, you know, have several slides in them where you can just open this whole thing up and have a party or any number of things. You see this a lot in California and Florida where they like to open up the space and uh, there you go, there's, a, there's another one. So all of these doors are opened up to where you have just one great big outdoor space there. And that's a sliding patio door. I wanna show you what a, I, I missed something. Uh, Florida window, I'll spell it right, Florida windows. So Florida windows are, not what I'm finding here. I don't see them. Florida Window Company. Let me just go back over here to the drawing board right quick and show you what I'm talking about. So like that, uh, like that sliding door that has multiple slides on it. Uh, 
where you can, you know, you can open all of these up and just have this great big space here that's open. A Florida window is pretty much the same thing. So Florida windows have several different um, sashes on them and all of these open up to where you have, you know, you have this great big open space here in the window. So that is a Florida window. Come to think of it, I want to show you another type of window too, and I'm sorry that I keep going back and forth here. For, uh, a student of mine uh, is a, he is a, um, uh, he is a window uh, guru. He, he does, uh, there he is, he's working on his windows there. So let's see, let me go back here and just look him up. Andrew is, uh, he just recently got married. I don't know if you recognize him or not. He's a very guy, nice kid. Uh, he is a student or was a student of AB Tech in the construction uh, program, but he restorates old windows. He is a window restorator. And so let's see if I can find these old windows. He just recently, like I say, he just got recently got married. So he's got a whole bunch of, you know, lovey-dovey uh, sappy pictures of him and his new wife and stuff. So uh, da, da, da. let me just go to albums. The big little house. I want you to look at this house. Uh, so he was restorating these windows here. And so where this was, it's down Georgia, uh, Charleston, I mean, Georgia, uh, South Carolina, Charleston, South Carolina, and uh, just look, give me a minute. I, I mean, look at these windows. There's the door. So that's a typical door size. All right, look at this window. Look how close it is to the floor here. Unbelievable. And uh, so what's so special about these windows? Well, there was at a time uh, down in Charleston, South Carolina, that had a... Uh, it had a door tax on it. So depending on how many doors you had on the house to get outside, you got taxed on how many doors you got. So they ended up making windows enormously large that opened way up. So you see that this window here can open dang near up to about this point here, which a person can walk in and out of very easily and they don't get taxed for these windows unbelievable so it was crazy so they 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 were taking this house it was it was owned by the press uh, the national historical society and they they had hired andrew to uh, redo these windows sadly this house was struck by lightning while they were working on it and andrew lost about three thousand dollars in tools they lost the house it was just a sad thing all all together so uh you know very huge loss in preservation. Just look at the, you know, the uh, the lattice work around the, the the walls. I mean, the the edges here, the uh, type of shingles. You have to special order these shingles now because of the way that they're shaped they are. And, you know, the dental molding, just everything about it. And I will tell you right now that this railing is illegal. It is only about two foot, uh, two and a half foot tall which is illegal. All railing has to be 36 inches off the ground now. So uh, it, it was really cool. I mean, just, you know, all of this lost. This is a transom window over a door, by the way. And in this particular uh, instance, they could open this, close the door, and they get air movement through the house. You've got to remember, they didn't have air conditioning back in the day. So they could open these huge windows uh, on the side of the house and, you uh, they could open these big windows and then open the, the transit window here and they could have air passage through there to help keep it cool. I mean, you know, this is the doorbell for God's sake. You just, you know, you don't see stuff like that anymore. Uh, even the, the way that they did the, the, um, the plaster work in here, this is old style wood lath. And so you just don't see that anymore. So to, to restore something like this, doors and windows is quite an undertaking. So it's, you know, 
kudos to uh, to Andrew. I'm glad he's doing it. Uh, and he's, you know, making his look. And he lives in a tiny house. Him and his wife actually built a tiny house over the summer before they got married. And they now live in this tiny house, which is really cool. Not going to talk about revolving doors. We don't have revolving doors in a house. Um, so I think pretty much hit on all of that. Let me back over here and see materials. We've talked about materials. Installation. I have tons of installation videos there, so I'm not going to bore you as well. And troubleshooting as well. <coughs> oh, I know what I forgot. Upward acting doors. So what is an upward acting door? Well, it's a garage door in most cases, and you have different styles of upward acting doors. So this is a bifold upward acting door. All right. And there's another picture of a bifold upward acting door. Uh, you have sectionals, uh, which you see all the time, which is the common, common uh, section. Sectional up, well, come on. That's what I'm talking about. This is the commonplace garage door that you see uh, in most cases, especially at a house. And then uh, you have a commercial roll up door. So these are also upward acting doors, but it's just a great big old roll up door. This is what we have in the shop. If you've been in the shop and seen those doors, usually they're made of metal and they just roll up into this little thing here. Very heavy. If this chain ever breaks or something, they will come crashing down, I promise you. Uh, but what I wanted to show you was an old style garage door, which is a one door garage door. They're kind of a pain to, to get up and down. Um, Let's see if I've got a video. I just love for you to see this thing open and close. It's just unbelievable. Garage door shuts. One, one garage door. Let's see what that looks like. 21 minutes long. So we're just going to fly through this thing. That's a sectional door. So they, when they put a, up a sectional door, they lay it out like this bolt it all together and put it up. I don't think this is what we're going to get. Maybe. Yeah, 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 it is. Look at this door, how it opens up. Watch this. That thing comes way outside and then slams down. I had one on, matter of fact, my house here had one on it in the house that, that I bought and Enola had one <laughs> like this. <coughs> and that is a one door uh, garage door, one piece garage door. It, they are outdated as crap. Uh, I, I haven't seen one put up in years. But if you're limited on headspace, this is the type of door that you want to go with because it takes maybe six inches of headspace up here at the top. So if you're doing a sectional door, a roll up door, obviously it's going to take more. Uh, you know, the roll up door is going to take, you know, it's going to have a foot or more. And uh, the sectional doors, uh, they have to have quite a bit too. So you can see where that track starts turning. And if you don't have a whole lot of headroom up here, so that you've got to have enough headroom for one of these sections, basically. So that gives you an idea of how that works. So you can see there, obviously, tons of headroom. And in my house here, uh, our our ceilings in the basement are only seven foot tall, so we had to. Uh, we do have a sectional door. They have new uh, new technology now that allowed to go with a low head uh, sectional door on that. And this is an insulated door, so ours is an insulated door as well. We don't have a, a door opener on it; we just open it manually. But it is an insulated door, so uh, we can, you know, in that room in the wintertime, it stays fairly warm because my son's bedroom is over top of it. That's a lot. Anybody got any questions? Is there anything that I've missed that I that you can think of right offhand that I can go back and y'all are gonna stay quiet. Y'all are wanting out of here, I know. <laughs> I was just gonna mention that uh, I've heard that single garage door referred to as a hangered door before. They Say it again, a hangered? 
a hangar door, like an airplane. Oh, a hangar door. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. I've never heard that, but I can see that very easily. See that. Sure. Hangar door. Yeah. There's uh, one on the, you know, there used to be an old airport out um, in, in West Asheville. You can still go see some of the old buildings mm -hmm. that uh, off of Brickhouse Road there. And one of those has a giant hangar door that's still operational. Definitely machine operated, I'm sure. I don't think so. I think. Really? The, yeah, it's got a big system of counterweights. Oh, wow. Yeah. I can see that. Well, that was, you know, that one that I just showed, you got a huge spring in there. You know, garage doors, they get heavy and, you know, the springs are enormous on those. Uh, I've seen a lot of people use those springs for other things other than garage doors because they're just so powerful. Yeah, good for chunking pumpkins, right? <laughs> well, I say the guy, he took a wood splitter or, you know, it was a homemade wood splitter that he just, you know, had a counterweight on it, a big old uh, uh, spring on there and you just, shove it down into the piece of wood and because it weighed so much it just kept right on going <laughs> that'll do it any other uh questions or comments or suggestions or anything i don't think so i think i'm good thank you for going over that with yeah the terms yeah oh yeah no problem no problem if you still have a problem let me know and uh, i'll try to lead you in the right direction Sounds good. Thank you. All right. So next week is our last full week. And I'm going to be going over finishes. And I'm going to try to do plumbing. I'm just going to do a, a, an overview of plumbing, electrical, and HVAC. We won't get into a whole bunch of detail of that because there are classes that uh teach you all that stuff. well other than plumbing we do not have a plumbing class at ab tech i'm just i'm flabbergasted at that so i'm probably going to spend a little bit more time on the plumbing aspect of it just to kind of give you a an overview of that but uh, definitely on tuesday we're going to talk about finishes and then on thursday we'll talk about uh plumbing electrical hvac and then next the following week uh well after thursday the final will open up you'll have Actually, no, Tuesday, the final will open up because I give you a week to do the final. You have an unlimited amount of chances. Uh, so if you make, if you don't make a hundred, it's your own fault. Uh, you give up or whatever. It's not the hardest thing in the world. And some of the questions you've seen before. So uh, we do not meet on the last Tuesday. That is, uh, that's a day for you to catch up. Uh, you know, some of you guys are, pretty far behind and i just want to give you all the chances in the world to get everything caught up so uh get this work done to me and and you know because i you know next tuesday is not going to be fun for me because all of the people that are slackers have waited and i got to grade all this stuff to last minute so uh try to get that to me as soon as you can if there's something that i that you've submitted that i haven't graded by all means you know send me an email because I'll be sitting at the computer when I read it. Send me an email saying, hey, I need to, you know, you need to correct this uh, or you need to grade this. So uh, let me know and uh, I'll get on that as soon as I can. Guys, thank you so much. And uh, I will see you again on Tuesday. Sounds good. Thank you. Thanks.